Hello, everyone. Thank you for dropping on in to Multi Micah's Blender <laughs> Repository. Today, we're going to be working on something a bit more simple in terms of uh, procedural or anything like that. It's going to be really simple in terms of just models and some rotations and then some compositing. You'll have this cool background effect that you can do with any object. I'm going to use flowers, but you'll see. So stay tuned and let's just work our way through this one. We're going to go ahead and delete our default objects per usual. Tap into our settings and what we're going to do is click the render property, turn on ambient occlusion, bloom, screen space reflections, run over to the edit, drop down in the top left hand corner, and animation, make sure that your default interpolation is set to linear, not bezier, and you'll get that nice looping style, <clears throat> or you can leave it bezier and you want the loop to be very obvious. <clears throat> okay. So once we're in here, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to work on the modeling. So I'm going to go ahead and import a model that I found from Sketchfab. I'm going to go ahead and link this as well for you guys. Uh, should be really, really simple for you to go around this. So how do you import? If you download it, click import. My file, Collidia. I think that's the name of this. I think that's the name of this. Here it is, red flower, import. Okay, so now we have a red flower. What I want to do is just make it a collection before even uh, <clears throat> getting started on the work because it can get pretty intense what we're going to be doing. So once we have our flower in, that's pretty much all the modeling we need to do with the flower. Uh, <clears throat> what we're going to do next is we're going to create a plane. And I'm going to go ahead and make it... Let's make it like two. We don't want it to be too big, so it's gonna be around four. And now let's bring back in our flower with a collection instance. So Shift A, and you get the flower, objects, uh, set origin, geometry to. Oops, looks like our our plane is in there. So if you if what just happened happened to you, you wanna make sure the plane you just spawned is not selected. Uh, you want to not select the base collection of the flower. Anyways, okay. Go back, set origin, uh, geometry to origin. There we go. We get a nice looking flower. And let's shrink them down a lot of bit, actually. The smaller our animation, I mean, the smaller of the playing field that we have with this animation, it'll be easier, something I learned. Just because when you have uh, certain models like this flower one, right? There's a lot of vertexes and things like that. And you just want to make sure that all that stuff is cleaned. Or not having to compute too much of it. Once you have your flower, what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate on the Y axis. Hold down control. Just let it move actually don't hold down control let's not do that uh, duplicate it make sure it's on the y-axis bring it a little bit where the spacing feels adequate to you and then you press shift R a few times after you do the duplication action and you'll have a little row of flowers now what I want to do as well at this point, I'm going to go ahead and make this a new collection. I'm going to call this flower row. I'll color it differently because I'm a different type of breed, can I say? Then let's bring in the flower row collection. Let's go objects and origin, geometry to origin, just so we can kind of not run into any issues there. And let's bring it a little bit closer. You wanna, at this point, you might wanna look at it from the top point of view. So what I did is I held down tilde, and that gives me a little bit more access. From the top point of view, on the X axis. This is your up to you at this point in terms of the visual styling, but I like to get a nice bit of space. Then we're gonna just control, kinda match it. Doesn't need to be perfect. 
ready to go. Now we have this like cool like little flower field. And, and you can kind of tell uh, depending on your computer at this point, it will be a little bit laggy um, with the materials and that's okay. We're gonna work our way through it. Okay. So what you're gonna do now is where things get a little more interesting as well. Once you have the plane and all the flower rows, you're gonna create another collection and call it complete piece. I think I might have just broke it. Okay, don't do that. What we're gonna do. I know why this is happening. What's happening is we don't want to use our OG flower row within this. Hmm. I need to fix this. Okay. I'm going to fix this. The way you would fix it, after you move it, just make sure you set geometry to origin. And we're gonna bring in another flower row. And just kind of wing it, you know? And then if I'm right, if this doesn't work this time, then I got another option. All right, looks like it worked. Yeah, that had to do with because I was taking an original collection instead of using this one. And then what we can do <clears throat> we want to be able to control this whole plane kind of going on here. Bring in a plane axis. I'm going to go ahead and call this one Flower Controller. And then what you can do is just select everything. Select this last. Control P, parent. Now we just have one object. What we can do from here is we can rotate and give it this cool kind of like uh, effect. Everything is working. Now, let's bring in a nice camera. So we want our camera to be on, not within the collection of like complete. We want it to be within our just like base collection here. A lot of collections going on today. Um, now let's see what the camera is seeing. And that's okay. But we want to give it a bit more of an angled perspective. So I'm going to go ahead and just move around there. Move around out here. Bring it a little bit further down. Let's see what happens when I take this plane. All right, this is fine. I'm gonna zoom, I'm gonna bring mine out a little bit because I wanna just catch more than one flower. <laughs> and then just bring it right about there. For your camera, you can go ahead and have a little composition guide. You can see. Now we're gonna mess with some animations now, now that we have the camera work done. <clears throat> we have the modeling done. We're pretty much fully set. Then we're gonna be working on some compositions, add a little bit of lights and Things will be, you'll be on your way and out of the YouTube world for now. Okay, so let's make a quick animation. Um, I liked moving the Y axis a little bit and then kind of just like letting it teeter totter. So move it right about there. Right about there. Insert that. So we got, we got like. Oh, it goes around 28, and then maybe we want it to quickly go all over here. So negative 28. We're winging it. It's not looking the best, but 
Looking like something. So it may have a bit of an issue here. Maybe a little slow on one movement and then a little fast on another. So what you can do is just bring it to like, my math is a little shot right now, but maybe your math will be better than mine. Just like hmm. I got an idea. <laughs> Fingering us. So if we start on zero, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine spaces before this even starts. Probably equal one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Mm. Eight. Let me move this back one as well. I think it's still gonna be an equal, but. This is okay for now. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna rotate this bad boy. So that's a very easy one. So insert a single keyframe. On the z-axis about to the end insert another single one so what's going on here with the keyframes is we have zero on both y and z now on the 80th one y is at 28 on the 170th negative 28 and then back to zero this way you want it to end and start on the same values so now you get this like kind of weird kind of psychedelic kind of like thing going on here so cool we have the animation the last thing we need to kind of bring in is our lights so make sure you have your base collection set selected here lights uh, I really like the area light for this one because you want the lights to be shooting through the flowers so I'm just gonna go ahead and rotate my light RX a little bit. We might need to do a rendered view just so I can see what's going on here. Oh, not 300, 200, maybe 100. Like this blue or something. Let's move this the other way. Rotate it over here. I personally liked having the blue and red kind of like fight. It gave it this like very interesting kind of and you can see here you get a lot of shadow work my computer starting to heat up it gives a lot of fun like stuff going on here so okay <clears throat> within your world settings make sure that the color is set to just like complete darkness as well and that should be enough for lighting here so let's go ahead and take a quick pause and save our file so i'm going to call my tutorial flowers because you don't want to lose your stuff if it renders and all of a sudden it crashes so now let's go over to compositing my favorite portion of this all if you've been following me at some time, you know, I'm a huge compositor here. I love this shit. It's how I, it's how I get that trippy kind of effect, honestly. And I want to start playing with some more, uh, some more stuff soon. But okay, so we brought in a reroute, we brought in a viewer, and then let's bring in our lens distortion. And I was playing with an effect the other day, so let's get in the jitter, a little bit of dispersion. Let's just render an image just so we can kind of see what's going on here. All right. It's a very up close and personal kind of vibe. Before you keep writing files to your temporary like I am, go ahead and just set the rendering setting. So that's MP FF MPEG video, MPEG 4, 
some video codec. There you go. Okay. So we got a little bit of dispersion. Let's just add a little bit right there. And then add mix. Bring this in. Set it to value. Okay, now you can see we're getting kind of trippy. Now here's where I was playing around. So add another mix. Add a difference. And then add a color ramp. And then connect your color ramp image to the bottom one. And then from here, now you can kind of see we have, we can control the strength of our like kind of trippy kind of thing going on here. And what you can also do with that is you can play with the different sort of like, um, like the easing and so go ahead and find something that you vibe with I know I was playing around with this and changing the color like it does do something but like personally I think maybe just starting with white and black would be the best because it does have a lot to do with just like color fundamentals and that kind of stuff so let's just chill with this for now uh, you could bring the disorder up a little bit and that's pretty much our thing so uh, I'm gonna render this out and we'll check in together in a few seconds all right so <clears throat> like always thank you give yourself a nice pat on the back you know you did a good job today I think a lot of people don't really show up for themselves in terms of like creative expression and whatnot and blender may be that instrument that we're all using so uh thank you once again for dropping by my channel i hope that you find what you need i hope you've created something that you can take into the world and you know feel free to drop into the type forum and just fill in some information if you want to join the discord there's a few of us uh kicking it online and Besides that, you know, thanks once again, and I hope to see you again in the next video.